Ready to dive into a language that's as vibrant and colorful as a Moroccan marketplace. I'm definitely up for that journey. We're talking Moroccan Arabic or Darija, and we've got some fascinating research to unpack. Linguistic studies, cultural insights, the whole works. It's a language that's so much more than meets the ear, that's for sure. Exactly. And speaking of Darija, that's the first thing I want to dig into. Our sources keep using that term. Should we be thinking of this as its own separate language distinct from, say, the Arabic spoken in other parts of the world? It's a question that linguists love to grapple with. You see, Moroccan Arabic, or Dolija, is part of this fascinating branch of the Arabic family tree called Maghrebi Arabic. Think of it like regional dialects, but on a much grander scale. Okay, I'm starting to get the picture. So, someone who speaks, say, Algerian or Tunisian Arabic might catch some familiar sounds in Darija. But if your only reference point is standard Arabic, the kind you'd hear on international news, you'd definitely notice some major differences. So, more than just a few different words here and there then, what is it about the history of Moroccan Arabic that's made it so unique within that broader Arabic language family? Well, picture Morocco centuries ago, a real crossroads of cultures. You had these ancient cities like Fez and Marrakesh, each with its distinct dialect. And then, around the 11th century, you have these nomadic tribes known as the Banu Hilal sweeping across North Africa, bringing their own linguistic flair to the mix. Yeah, so we're talking about a real melting pot of linguistic influences. Exactly. And Moroccan Arabic emerged from that melting pot, absorbing bits and pieces from all these different regions and historical periods. It's a language that truly embodies the story of Morocco itself. That's fascinating. But let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? What are some of the specific linguistic quirks that give Moroccan Arabic its unique sound, its own musicality, so to speak? One of the most striking features, I'd say, is this near disappearance of short vowels. Okay, now you're just using big words to make me feel like I'm back in school. Break that down for me. Imagine the word shorter, for instance. In standard Arabic, it's tsasari, but in Moroccan Arabic, you often hear it as aksa. You can almost feel how that first short vowel has faded away over time. Ah, I see, I see. So it's like the language has streamlined itself a bit. In a way, yes. And that leads to these characteristic consonant clusters, which, I have to admit, can be a bit of a mouthful for language learners. Yeah, I can imagine. It's like trying to say shorter, but compressing all those sounds together. So we're talking about a different kind of rhythm, a different kind of flow compared to other Arabic dialects. Absolutely. It adds this whole other layer of complexity to the language. And speaking of complexity, we can't forget about emphatic consonants. Emphatic consonants. Okay, you're going to have to walk me through this one. Think of it like whispering a word versus shouting it. Yeah. That difference in intensity, that's kind of similar to what's happening with emphatic consonants. They're pronounced with more force, more emphasis, and that actually changes the vowels around them. Oh, wow, that's interesting. For example, take the word for student. In Moroccan Arabic, it's pronounced talib. While in, say, Egyptian Arabic, that emphasis on the T sound is even stronger, which gives it a different feel. So subtle differences in pronunciation can completely change the character of a word. Exactly. Though it's worth noting that Moroccan Arabic is a bit more laid back than some other dialects when it comes to these emphatic consonants. Okay, I'm starting to hear how all these subtle differences create such a distinct sound. Now, one thing that always pops into my mind with languages I don't know is the writing system. Learning a whole new alphabet seems pretty daunting. What's the deal with written Moroccan Arabic? Ah, uh, you've hit upon a fascinating aspect of Darija. Historically, it didn't really have a standardized writing system. Really? Yeah. And if you think about Morocco's diverse cultural influences over the centuries, it makes sense, right? Yeah, totally. Actually, the text mentions that Moroccan Jews often use Hebrew script to write Darija, which I think speaks to that intertwining of cultures within Morocco. That's fascinating. So what about today? How is Moroccan Arabic written these days? Well, that's where things get really interesting. In recent years, there's been a real surge in publications using written Darija. And of course, online, people have come up with all sorts of creative ways to represent the sounds of Darija using the Latin alphabet and numbers. Numbers. Exactly. Yeah. They might use, say, the number two to represent the sound Q because there's no direct equivalent in English or French. It's like a code. It is, in a way. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the adaptability of the language and the desire to see it represented in written form. It really shows you how languages find ways to evolve and adapt 
especially in our digital age. It's a testament to the power of language, that's for sure. Now, we've talked about how Moroccan Arabic blends these different Arabic dialects, but our sources mention other influences as well, right? It's like it's borrowed ingredients from other linguistic kitchens. Absolutely. We can't forget about the impact of Berber, especially in the western regions of Morocco. Ah, yes, the language of Morocco's indigenous people. Exactly. And then, of course, there's the influence of French and Spanish woven into the fabric of Moroccan history. Right, from the colonial period. So I've always been curious about loan words, those words that languages just seem to pick up along the way. What are some prime examples of how these other languages have seasoned Moroccan Arabic, so to speak? Well, in some cases, words are adopted almost wholesale, you know, keeping their original form, like tekchita, the traditional Moroccan dress. Beautiful dresses, by the way. They are. And that word comes straight from Berber. Same goes for Lala, which is like saying lady or madam, respectfully. Oh, I've heard that. And henna, at least in some dialects, means grandmother, again, borrowed directly from Berber. Interesting. But sometimes words get a bit of a Moroccan twist. Take the French word for automobile, for example. In Moroccan Arabic, it becomes towabil. Towabil, I like it. And television transforms into telfaza. Telfaza, it's like they've made these words their own. You know, it's funny because I'm starting to realize I actually understand more Moroccan Arabic than I thought. That word cucina that you hear all the time in cooking shows, that's got to be from Spanish, right? You're spot on. Cucina, straight from the Spanish word for kitchen. And if you're talking about your plans for the semana, you're using the Spanish word for week. See, I knew I was picking up on some of this. It's amazing how these words have become so seamlessly integrated into everyday Moroccan Arabic. It makes you wonder, though, with all these regional and linguistic influences, are there variations within how Moroccan Arabic is spoken within Morocco itself? Kind of like how in English someone might say soda while someone else says pop or fizzy drink. That's a great observation, and you're absolutely right. Just like any language spoken across a diverse area, Moroccan Arabic has its regional quirks. Give me an example. Well, even something as simple as the word for now can change depending on where you are. No way. In a lot of places, you'd hear daba, a classic Moroccan Arabic word. But head over to the central or southern regions, and you might hear druk or druka. It just goes to show you how dynamic language can be. It's always fascinating to me how much variation you can pack into a single language. But we've been getting pretty deep into the nitty gritty of Moroccan Arabic's linguistic DNA. I want to pull back for a second and look at the bigger picture. How does this unique blend of influences we've been talking about, how does that reflect Moroccan culture as a whole? That's such a great question. Because, of course, you can't really separate a language from the people who speak it, right? <laughs> None of those layers of history and cultural influences, they leave their mark on the language. And our sources really highlight how Moroccan Arabic is like this incredible reflection of the country's identity. Give me some examples. Well, think about this whole idea of code switching. Code right? switching. Yeah. Like, it's so common in Morocco to hear people seamlessly moving between Moroccan Arabic and French, even in the same sentence sometimes. Oh. Right. It's like this linguistic dance. And it speaks to the legacy of colonialism, for sure. But it also shows how Moroccans navigate these diverse linguistic landscapes every single day. It reminds me that language isn't just about communication. It's deeply tied to identity, how people see themselves, and where they fit in. Exactly. And, you know, that ties into another really interesting thing. Our sources mentioned this push to reclaim Arabic words. Reclaim. Yeah, like a deliberate effort to bring back more words with roots in standard Arabic. It's almost like a linguistic homecoming after decades of French influence. Wow, that's so interesting. Right. It's like they're reshaping the language, reclaiming their heritage. So it sounds like Moroccan Arabic is always evolving, finding new ways to reflect the energy of Moroccan culture. Absolutely. And honestly, I think the best example of that is the Moroccan rap scene. Oh, yeah. I've heard some of that. It's amazing. Right. It's incredible. And they're using Darija as this powerful tool to talk about their lives, their struggles, their dreams, everything. It shows you how much life this language has, mm. you know, how it connects with younger generations. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. This language that some might dismiss as just a dialect is actually this driving force in music and culture. It makes you wonder, where is this going to go next? Right. That's what I love about it. And, you know, one thing I find really exciting is how Moroccan Arabic is starting to push beyond its traditional boundaries. Mm -hmm. You see it more and more in literature, music, like we said, but even in scientific writing now. Wow, no kidding. It really challenges how we define 
language versus dialect, don't yeah, you think? Absolutely. It shows how powerful and adaptable Darija is. I love that. That's a perfect note to end on. And I think that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive into the amazing world of Moroccan Arabic. It's been a pleasure. We've just scratched the surface, really, but hopefully you, listening out there, have discovered something new about this vibrant and ever-evolving language. Until next time.